the, the first presentation uh, and discussion we had, we had a large crowd, uh, about 55 to 60 people, and, and it kind of uh, forced us into more of a formal Q&A, but the plan all along has been to make this very conversational, so I invite you to, to stop me at any time and ask a question, uh, interrupt, I won't, I won't consider that to be rude. Uh, I have about 10 or 12 slides that will give you a little bit of background on the process, we'll show you some concepts, uh, I want to emphasize that they're very much concepts that you know we're still in the, the dreaming planning stage, that that will change uh, pretty quickly, pretty soon. But for now, we're really in listening mode. So we want to hear all your ideas. Uh, we haven't out of hand dismissed any idea, although the, the underground parking garage, well, um, well, I think many of us would love to see that additional parking from a budgetary standpoint, um, you know, maybe beyond our reach, but we're really, we're keeping all ideas in play and uh, so I, I invite you to, to comment and share your, comment, uh, your, your ideas. So um, I'm Dave Donahue. I work in the President's Office uh, at the college. Uh, I'm involved in the community in lots of different ways. Uh, I've been involved in, in this project, uh, chairing an advisory group. Uh, we thought it would be fun to start with this picture of Twilight to, to bring people back in time to uh, what we think uh, is the early 1900s. I think Glenn Andres dated the, the photo in the first conversation we had at you know, the first decade of the 1900s. And it shows you sort of the wide open sweep to twilight. Um, this is a little bit uh, further along and, and shows a little bit of the development after that. And so who's our advisory group? Uh, who have I been working with? It's been a mix of, of college folks and, and some town folks and some uh, uh, town of Middlebury employees. So uh, Jen Bleich, who has a background in, in uh, historic preservation and architecture. Nancy Malcolm with the Planning Commission. Um, Tom again, who I'll take a second to introduce us here tonight, and he uh, is the project manager for the project. Um, Chris Robbins, who's also on the planning commission, folks may know. Megan Brady, who's part of the Two Brothers uh, ownership group. Um, Ted Dunnigan, who actually, when we invited him to be part of the group, was a town employee, but has since become a college employee. Um, our two students, Morgan Wraith and Sage Haber, and then Keith Wagner, who is our landscape architect. And I would uh, mention just briefly that we had a competitive process to select the landscape architect. Uh, we gave them uh, what I'll show you in one second, which is a set of principles. We asked them to come back with some uh, design concepts and then to walk us through those design concepts. We uh, narrowed it down to three landscape architects before choosing uh, Wagner Hobson. So um, our focus initially has been to establish a set of principles. You're gonna see the principles. They're pretty, um, I, I'm not sure what the, phrase du jour is, but kind of appetite and motherhood, they're, they're hard to argue with, they're, you know, they make sense, they're intuitive, they're logical. And now we've shifted into the, the listening mode to hear ideas from the community, and uh, then we'll go back with our advisory group and the landscape architect, and, and we'll uh, try to sugar out what ideas we think we can achieve uh, in the park. I'll tell you now, just based on the first meeting we had, we had uh, tons of great ideas more good ideas than we could possibly uh, accomplish in the, in the park. It was kind of nice that there was an acknowledgement of that in the meeting. People said, wow, if we try to do all that, we're not really gonna do anything well. So we recognize that uh, the, the challenge to our advisory group is, is, um, is significant. We're gonna have to figure out, okay, what are the things we think we can do well in this space? And uh, we're not gonna be able to do anything. So it's hard knowing that from the outset that you're gonna disappoint some people, but I think we'll also make some people really happy. Um, the buildings are scheduled to be uh, raised, uh, removed in June. And uh, if people have questions about that process, Tom McGinn, who's here, can tell you more about that. So the buildings come down in June, and then probably in late July, Tom, is that right? The, the park construction starts to... Yep, about yeah. eight weeks later. Yep. Great. Start the park. So um, I don't know how well you can read those from where you are, but I'll, I'll kind of read through them a little bit or just talk through them a little bit and say, um, first thing was to make use of the topography. If you know that, that site, you know that it slopes quite dramatically. So there are some challenges and opportunities in that. So we want to try to take advantage of the topography. Um, make family friendly, and we've certainly heard from lots of people who would love this to be a place where they can take their, their young children and where there are um, are maybe some interactive elements, and we've looked at other parks um, beyond Middlebury and looked at what other communities have done to energize those spaces. 
Uh, and there's lots of fun things you can do with, with play elements, natural elements, to, to make it a, an engaging place for young people. Um, we want to differentiate it from the other parks in town. Uh, we definitely, as a committee, um, took a little bit of license to think about all the parks in town. Uh, you know, when you're doing park research and, and trying to make yourself a park expert, you can't help but offer some suggestions about the other parks, which, which we'll do, whether Kathleen, you know, uh, where they go, we don't know. But, um, you know, there's some exciting opportunities with the Fountain Park, which will um, be altered by the rail project. And um, there's some things we won't be able, to be able to accomplish here that we think might be um, achievable elsewhere. Uh, so the design should keep maintenance low. Um, you know, we've, we've talked about water elements, and they're still in the mix. Um, but, you know, uh, some of the folks on, on, from our staff work here can tell you that water elements are tricky with long winters. And so, um, you know, we'll see how those hold up as we do our work in the committee. Um, a variety of seating. We want people to uh, be able to come in the park and hang out. Um, so we, I, the way I've described this is we want the park to be both the destination, some place you'd want to go because there's something there that you, know, you want to go see or that you want to experience, and a place where you'd stop and hang out. Uh, I've also said repeatedly that it's a place where we want members of the town and um, members of the college community to, to both feel comfortable feel really welcome. It's a, it is clearly a transition point, and it's a transition point where we want everyone to feel like um, it's their space too. Um, accessible, accessible and easy to navigate, so we talked about um, ADA and, and uh, those kinds of things. We, we don't want to create any impediments to accessing the park. Uh, consideration for historical markers. So um, the this, this site, as many folks in this community know, has a history, um, a, a really kind of rich history, um, people attended high school there, and uh, we want to try to honor that in some way, shape, or form. Uh, I have had conversations with the alumni group from the high school, and, and we're talking about what we might do. We talked about maybe a marker that, that uh, maybe the cornerstone, or it's not the cornerstone, the arch stone from the high school might be preserved and, and reused. We think there, there are some things we can do with that. The gym itself is an armory building, right? Tom? Armory and uh, WPA. WPA, yeah. so we, we think that it's worth commemorating that in some way, shape, or form. We don't know exactly how, but when we've talked about historical markers, there are examples in town of other markers that, that um, we might be able to reference, so uh, we'd like to do that. Uh, mix of shade and sun, I'm not gonna elaborate on that. Um, we made a commitment with the town, and this has come up, that this will be a public park, um, privately owned, but a public park, for 99 years by agreement with the town, and there'll be no built structures. So we, we, um, we all agreed on that. And uh, we talked about appropriate infrastructure, which uh, in this day of wire, of a wired world is, is um, probably includes Wi-Fi and, and certainly includes um, uh, well-lit and uh, uh, those kinds of things. And uh, we said it should have some flat spaces. So there's been an interest in maybe rotating the farmer's market there, uh, maybe having it be a performance area possibly a place where the um, uh, outdoor, outdoor Music Festival, what's it called? Field, not Field Days, no. in July. The Green. The festival, festival on the Green, festival. thank you. Thanks. Um, where a festival in Green might be um, suitable. Uh, it could be a place where we would show an outdoor movie. I know there's been an interest in, in that. And when I show you the concepts, you'll see where the, the flat space is. Uh, is. Um, so here's a concept, and, and I'm, I'm I'm not a, a landscape architect, but I'll um, invite Tom and, and also Norm, uh, Norm Christman who can jump in here. Uh, and I'll just sort of walk you through um, and orient you. So um, the rotor's up here, okay? This is the point. Um, Samas would be here. And uh, we also, I, this question has come up, we agreed to retain the parking, okay? So, so in total, uh, I think the agreement was that we would retain the parking until a suitable replacement parking could be identified, which that hasn't happened, so our plan is that the parking will, will remain. Uh, this is a large flat play lawn uh, that sort of slopes up to uh, an area with seating that uh, these red markers are holding spots, possibly for, for a sculpture, possibly, possibly for a, an interactive play element. Uh, this is a, a that's outdoor uh, seating area designed to play off of the energy that um, already exists around Salmas and, and sort of extends up to Otter Creek Bakery. Uh, this area is, um, it has seating. It's to give you a sense for its size. 
It's probably uh, 30 feet by we, about 30 20 feet. 30 by 20. <laughs> 30 by 20. So, so one of the things with this is it's really hard to get scale. So, so this triangle is about 30 by 20. Um, one of the comments when people first thought is, well, it looks really small. 30 by 20 is a good size space. Um, this is a, a you know a curvilinear sloping uh, grade change walkway. Uh, one of the things we talked about is that you know people uh, what we've learned on campus probably the hard way, and Norm could say more about this is that people walk where they want to walk, not where you want them to walk. So we put lots of walkways up, and then students walk where they want to walk. And so um, we recognize that people are going to be walking, and they're going to decide I want to go over to Sons and get a cream or whatever. So. We want it to have that north-south <coughs> traffic. Um, this is a, a sort of a, a knee, a knee high, maybe slightly higher retaining wall, which also would be suitable for seating, and sort of creates some sense of privacy for this cafe area. Does that extend? What's that? That goes across the green. Wow. Okay. Does this extend? Yeah, if you follow it that. It stops in the cafe. So what's between there and the crosswalk on 30? What's that? This area? Yeah. The so the walkway continues, but not with the knee wall. The wall is sort of is, is just in this sort of outdoor seating area. Okay. And intended in part to create a, a little more sense of privacy. So that that is a paved wall? That, goes that it, it could be a stone wall. Okay. We, we haven't figured out what, what, what the material okay. would be. Yeah. Got it. Uh, up in here in the corner, we have hard, uh, hard space, hard, hard ground uh, designed to play off of the, the rotary and, and other things that are already happening, including um, the space here now at the town office building. So uh, it, it's, it's pretty exposed there, you know, because it's on all three sides, so it's a little bit different than, than the seating area by Otter Creek. And, but we think it's, it should uh, have an element that responds to those kinds of things. And, and actually, that little red dot there is also a placeholder for um, a sculpture or something of that nature. Uh, I'll tell you that this area, this triangle up here, is probably more in play in some ways. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. They're, the whole thing is in play. But this area, we think, might be suitable for some display of art. Um, that might be also a place where the historical markers would go, so that there would actually be a place where you would walk and, and sort of uh, um, you know, have interactive elements. Uh, one of the ways that I've thought about the park is that there might be some aspect of the park that would be suitable to a field trip, right? We're going we're to take our third grade class and we're going to go to the, to the park and we're going to check out these historical pieces and we're going to come down and have lunch on the, the, the cafe area and then we're going to kick a ball around on the, the large play surface. So I'm, I'm talking a lot. I'm, I'm, I'll keep talking until you interrupt me, so please stop me anywhere. So I'm going to start with Irene and then Eric. It would be helpful to have an indication of the footprint of the two existing buildings so there's a sense of placement and how much space there is from, say, the former main entrance of the high school to, yeah, okay. This was not a setup. I did not ask Irene to ask that question. This <laughs> is actually the footprint of the building. Okay. So that's the footprint of the gym. This is the connection between the gym and the office building. So one of the reasons we put that in there is because the, uh, I'm going to go backwards for a second. The play lawn is probably 35 yards or so by 35 yards. So if you think about half of the football field, which is, I think, 50 yards by 25 yards, it's not quite that large, but it's a very large play lawn. Um, uh, Eric? I'm thinking of Bryant Park in New York. Are you familiar with that? Uh, I'm, I'm yes. not first-hand familiar, but it's one of the parks that I, I you read about in one okay. of our So if you're trying to relate the size of this as compared to Bryant Park, would it be two-thirds the size, do you think? Is this is a, an acre and a third. Okay. I would say Bryant Park is a little bit larger. I think so. Yeah. yeah I think. It yeah, might be so twice as big. It might be twice as big. Okay. Uh, in a very active park there compared to what it was 20 years ago. Sure yes. That was very bad. One thing they had there, I don't know if you've been addressing it over the years, over the planning of this, they had a, they had a tonk court in Bryant Park, which uh, mostly seniors play there, mm -hmm. and it allows people to look and participate and it's an active sort of situation. So, was that looked at at all? What sort of? What, what a pet tonk? 
it's the French game where you have a little bowl right. and you have a little uh, oblong square, mm -hmm. which is probably ooh, maybe 20 feet by 10 feet, maybe. Mm -hmm. Uh, kind of dirt, hard packed dirt. Right? Yes, yeah. Or, 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 or gravel. Or gravel. Oh, yeah. It's a game that, you know, it's a French game that can be yeah, played. It's like, you know, yeah, it's like a bocce. Not, 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 not bocce. Not, not bocce, no. no but, no, but I know you're a bocce guy. But same right. principle as bocce. Yes, yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, that's interesting. We should definitely keep that in mind. We did hear uh, interest in uh, mm -hmm. chess tables. Like that, you know, I, I don't know if people have been to the, the 16th Avenue Mall in Denver, Colorado has walk up. Tables where people are playing. Right. Right. Yeah, I was just thinking about the you know uh, um, more active senior group hanging out there and people looking and walking through the park. There sure. would be other people around the students there. I I didn't mention these are uh, hedges designed to to serve as a backstop if people are kicking a ball around and playing. We, we thought okay, we don't want that running into it. It also uh, shades a little bit the the view of the parking lot, um, which is, I'm sorry, this is, wants to keep putting it into the town Wi Fi. Yeah. Um, so, and you'll see these are openings so that we can allow people to do what they want to do, um, which they get out of the car and they want to walk right where they want to go. And uh, one more point is we have talked about the sidewalk is right along the road. And, and so there's been a discussion about uh, wanting protection or wanting to, to um, some sort of screening from the road. And, and a suggestion was made, well, shouldn't you bring the sidewalk in? And there are, there are at least two schools of thought on that. One is that uh, whatever you do to shade with, with grass and, and a little bit of, or, or plantings becomes mud and dirt. And, and it doesn't work well in that. In, in the world of snow removal, this orientation is, is probably better. Another rationale is that actually the sidewalks are there and they're in really good shape, and so we can reuse them and um, you know be smart with our resources and, and spend that money in other ways. Bill, do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question on the, on the College Street side. How does the number of angled parking places in this configuration compare to what's there now, given the you know the driveway and certain? Yeah, you pick up a few. You pick up a few. You pick up a few. Okay. Yeah, when you when you close off that driveway. Yeah, you pick up a few. There might be some ah. service vehicle. Are there any? Are there? No. no, there are none. They're pretty much parking. Okay. No, oh, oh, pretty much I mean, all parking. Okay. We, in, in the interest of sort of our due diligence as a group, yeah. we did talk about, well, what if you what if you remove half of this parking? Could you recoup them there? And yeah. you know, we just felt like parking is kind of a hot button issue, yeah. and, and we didn't want to we didn't want to go down that path. But you know, longer term, as as parking solutions develop for the town, it may make sense to revisit that. Is that one way? This? No, the um, right there. Where yeah. Now. You know, Kathleen, you can help me, but I think the, the entrance is here and the exit is here. Oh, no. right. The other way around. Oh, you go down around. Of Academy Street and in this entrance. Okay, you come in this way. You exit that way. Yeah. And that's the street's one way down. And that's Academy Street's one way. This is Academy Street. So this is the intersection with 30. And the entrance is here. So right. people can do a loop, essentially. It sends you a loop. Yeah, and if you, yeah, right. When you come out here, you can't go that way. You have to come back. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. So I, I have some suggestions. Yeah. Yeah. The, the I, we're no, you should, you should yeah. fire away. And I just want to make sure we're capturing because I can't yep. stand talking. Sure. Right. Can I stand up and maybe this? Absolutely. Can I show you on here? Yeah. So I, I you, would, you would not be the first person to I do this. I would not be the. It's just easier to. Yeah. So I think that with this play lawn, you really created a space where it can be more more activity, more energy, more possibility. And I would really, a couple things. I wonder if this, how well utilized this space is going to be. Just one thought. It's a question. I don't know. But it seems like I understand why that's going across, because people are going to walk there anyway. But just that that is not a place that people generally are as much as here. So I just wonder about that being in a different location, either here which kind of is in between with this crosswalk. Just a thought. The other thing is, I would love to see more happening here. And I mentioned this in the last meeting, but I feel like that is really where the most energy is going to be happening most often. Because this could be you know, activities and things that are more thought out, like let's go kick a ball, or let's have this event. 
But this is where people are going to be driving. They're going to be coming into Middlebury, coming into you know the college area. And I feel like on foot, bike, car, that's where I'd like to see more, um, just more happening. Whether that would be like hardscaping with landscaping. I've mentioned a fountain idea to you. I'm not as I love that idea, and I proposed that really beautiful one. But I'm not. I recognize that. The, the difficulty with that, but something ideally I think would, would have a path that could come in and something focal round here. I think triangles with round go really well and just that kind of beautiful, if you look at parks where people are like, wow, what they want to go in, there's yeah. some kind of an angle yeah. and then seating and something that pulls people in that maybe includes the monuments you yeah. talked about or other beautiful things. Those, those are great suggestions. Great suggestions. I, I can. I'll share a couple things with you that have come up that, yeah. that sort of are, are uh, in a similar vein. Uh, the idea of bringing people in and having on like a circuit, like a circular where you might do the historical markers. Yeah. So, so definitely opening up this corner, this point, so that you can see into the park, so you don't feel shaded from the park, so you're you're invited in, and then you know some sort of path that maybe comes in and does a little circle that. that has those kind of historical marks or, or things of interest things that would draw you in. Yeah. It doesn't have to be historical marks. And often people are visual, so something that's beautiful, whether it's a species of plant or a bed, or like let's go sit over there, or a fountain, or art, or the monument. Yeah. And something that is not just symmetrical or, I mean, I like the round yeah. symmetry, but you know, it's like you want to go well, to the park because it's a beautiful place. It's not just grass with trees, which is lovely, but also, I think this could be a really beautiful zone. An idea that was proposed also is a, a uh, and, and I, again, we're a long way from being wedded to any of these ideas, but a bench with a, a Gamelia Painter, uh, you know, statue that, that, you know, similar to, I don't know if it's been in Montreal, but there's a, in old Montreal, there are these three women that, that people always go up and they, they they're right. sculpture, right? You the steward sculpture. So it's the kind of thing you would go in the park and you would sit next to the middle right. painter, the town's founder, and get your picture taken next to him. Again, I don't know if that's the right idea, yeah. but but something that would bring you in. We also looked at a, a really cool um, bird sculpture that has become a really playful, interactive element in a park, and that kind of thing where kids would want to go and you know play with uh, the bird sculpture. And Tom, you want you want to. So I'm going to know that, that or talk about this corner. On the point piece. Yeah. I mean, and understand, though, that's what, you, what you're suggesting. It's good. It's great. But the next time you walk by there, look at the slope yeah. that's there. It's severe from 30 over to College Street across that whole corner. So you could do it. You could make it flat, and you could make it accessible, and you could, but you would have to do a bunch of earthwork and a bunch of retaining wall along the College Street side of that point right. to achieve that. The what topography is a challenge. Tiered? What about having like land tier, like paths that go kind of down in a way where you people could go by wheelchair or on foot mm -hmm. and so that you keep that natural yeah. it'd be harder to do a fountain. It would be hard. I think we have looked at some tiered uh, landscaping that actually yeah. creates a really playful fun element. I think Doing that in a way that that will still be real wheelchair accessible yeah. will be the challenge. But yeah. I'm, you know, Tom is my reality check, and I yeah. just kind of keep dreaming with you. Yeah. So it's in. You know, it's you all guys in the do a lot of that up at the college. I'll say too, there are a lot of little nooks that are beautiful. But it's like, oh, people want to explore. Even behind the library, there's I don't even know what you call it, but there's a fountain. And the garden of the, the seasons. The garden of the seasons. So it's. I mean, it's really cool if you yeah. discover it. I yeah. think the placement, yeah. you know, some people don't. But that is where there's a slope and there's fun things going on and kids want to, kids do go back there and they hide behind the wall and yeah. they, it's just very interesting and that's, do you know Alice Keck Park in Santa Barbara no. by chance? No. It's a different zone, but that would be one to look. It's very beautiful in terms of just natural hardscaping and, and landscaping. Eric, do you want to you you jump in? Any thoughts of bringing reference in the Rather Trust into the park at all. For instance, when the survey was done, I'm in tourism, I thought if you have a statue of Rather Trust, they will come, right? And there'll be a lot more tourists come to Middlebury. And I don't think there was anything in Middlebury itself mm -hmm. that refers to Rather Trust, is it? Mm -hmm. No, first time it's come up, but good suggestion. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in 
Could you just review for me the pedestrian access to that point from the far side of College Street and the, this side of... Uh, pedestrian access to this point. Is so that, that your is question? Yeah. yeah. This yeah. is the road. So the rotor is here. Yep. Right? So there's a crosswalk right here. That is right. Okay. That's the crosswalk right So you're right actually you've landed on that spit of land. Yeah, and, and, and we're, we are talking about yeah. hardscaping yeah. that point. I yeah. mentioned this a little bit earlier, but... I wanted sure. to make sure there yeah. wasn't another um, gauntlet to right. leap before you yeah. hit the safe There isn't point. a connection from the north yeah. side of College Street to the point. Mm. There isn't a crosswalk there. Yeah. You have to go down to Samus to hit the crosswalk. So the Correct. existing crosswalk, crosswalk on 30 at the point right. across from the uh, optometrist, mm -hmm. Dr. Diane. Right. People are coming right. off the circle and there's no... Right. right. So right. there is no access. There is no... I also, I want to come back to the other uh, question I was raised about this point, mm -hmm. and I, I think that that's a good one. I think uh, two things have come up about this, about this seating area and this seating area, which they are, they are, they're on the perimeter, so they, they feel more exposed, and, and might we consider some sort of seating area that was more internal to the, to the park. So that's in the mix, and I think that that's a good one. Uh, one of the things that I never appreciated about this point is that it, it does demark the, the uh, western entrance of town from Route 30 which is, I think, a fairly common approach. Um, mm -hmm. Traffic that comes up from, from 87 uh, comes that way. And, and so part of the intent here was to, to signal in some way activity and, and, and arrival of sorts. I don't know if it's going to work, but you know, that, it's, in, it's in there for now. So that's the way Keith, Keith Wagner envisions this. That, you know, go, go, when you go back to your computer, look up Wagner's, OK? and take a look at the things that they've done before. He's got his portfolios online. And one of his sort of typical features is this grove of visually interesting trees, like he's showing right there at the bottom, with a stone dust base to it, with some seating in there, and some interesting sort of archi archi architectural, sculptural elements to it. So it's, it's Something that he's done before, and if you, if you look at his website, you'll see examples of it. And you'll have a better understanding, I think, rather than a one-dimensional you know, sketch. Uh, rain garden, water runoff, drainage, uh, uh, natural species, that, that's all in the mix. I just mentioned it because we've heard it, and, and those, those are all good suggestions. And um, there is, there is a, a, a desire to, for water to run this way to the creek, so we'll, we'll, we'll need to deal with that. And then I also think, um, particularly in the spring when athletic teams are trying to get out on sports fields, I, I have a higher appreciation for drainage and mud. Um, you know, we want this play lawn to be a play lawn that, that can be used quite often and, and not a soggy mess of a lawn that. Um, so I'm gonna jump ahead and, again, this is the footprint of the two buildings. So this is the gym, gives you a good sense of reference, mm -hmm. and then, I have one other concept that um, looks pretty similar. Uh, actually, uh, Mostly the trees on the north mm -hmm. side of the yeah. So it's treed on this side, and actually there is um, benches here, but there, there's another uh, version of this that has wispy grass that, that sort of um, lines this walkway with um, paths down through that, which we think is kind of a fun fun element. I think it, it, it creates a sort of more diverse aesthetic in the park. And I think you can do, we could do some playful things with the crossover from the walkway um, into the play lawn. So um, the floor is open for questions and suggestions. This kind of gives you an orientation of a building going away, which I think is a really cool graphic. Um, this is the, no offense to the building, but this is the, um, this is the cafe area and uh, gives you a sense for how that would feel. It also, again, kind of helps you get an appreciation for the slope and um, questions that have, other things that have come up about reusing the bricks and, and that kind of stuff. There may be limited availability to do that. Um, one of the things when you contract for a building to be removed is 
they want to reuse and repurpose and, and uh, drive as much uh, value and revenue for, for the uh, contracting firm that does that. So um, we, we, we will certainly go after the, the stone, the arch stone, and, and we'll probably have the ability to go after. There's some pieces of marble that we think we probably can um, secure and reuse. Someone wanted us to use the columns and, and uh, you know, wanted us to preserve the arch. And so, you know, those, they're in the mix. I, I'll be honest, I'm not sure if, you know, preserving the column, uh, preserving the arch from what I understand is a massive undertaking. So probably not where we want to spend the money um, given all the other things we want to accomplish. I read. Regarding the crosswalk <coughs> that goes from the point west, there is a crosswalk there now. And considering that piece of sidewalk, yeah, not not the one yet, yeah, that, that crosswalk area there, did I understand correctly that there will not be a crosswalk that goes completely across over to the other side of the street? To follow us. This, so there, this yeah, is an existing crosswalk. That will stay there. They yeah. will stay. They would Both stay. Okay, yeah. because there there aren't, was one there aren't sidewalks all along. Yeah. There's the, okay. the crosswalk that comes right across from Otter Creek directly yeah. across. Okay. That, yeah. okay. that would that would step. Yeah. And I think there's a question about how, how far do you hard skate down and what value do you get out of it? I, I don't know. I understand. I think. Hey, Tom. Nice to see you. Yeah. Um, been looking at this and, and some thoughts. It seems to me there's an awful lot of narrow angles throughout this whole design. And what would you think if you took this sidewalk area here and made this into a circle to soften so that people aren't all meeting at points. Mm -hmm. This area right in here, as you saw from the previous picture, is relatively flat. That would be a great spot mm -hmm. for the painter yep. or in the sculptures, I think. It's also centered more on the whole scale, so it would look down and across at the other park areas. And I think it might yes. be a, so, so sort more of a in smoother. This area, yeah, this right. is fairly yeah. flat in there. At least I think it is. It's really where the front of the building is, kind of. Yeah. I think if you went back to the other one, you can see this is the this is the building front, and it's fairly level in there. And it, if you centered it in here, I think you mm -hmm. would yeah, run no, more. I like that idea. Um, is that part of uh, the Epson County Grammar School? No. Property? No. This? No. Yeah. No. no that no, wasn't part. No. Just what's in back of Twilight? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And, and that's an interesting, I'll, I'm just going to clarify for people who don't know, the um, Twilight Lecture Hall, which is called the Owners Building, sits at the end of, of uh, Grammar School Park. Mm -hmm. and, and that park is, is owned by a small entity called the Grammar School Corporation. And the college maintains and insures that land, but it's not owned by the college. Um, pe people in one of the other meetings had said, well, why don't you take the things you can't do here and do on that park? And we said, oh, that's not really, we don't own that park. Yeah. So. And that, that area can only be used for educational purposes. Educational and recreational purposes. Recreational. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, some people people were interested in an ice rink, yeah. and I have you know a couple kids who play hockey. And I thought I have an outdoor rink, uh, not such a great year for my outdoor rink, but I but yeah, that's that's great. That there's this is probably not a great place to do that. Um, and, and our experience with outdoor rinks on campus is it's really challenging, but it's it's a fun idea, and, and um, maybe maybe the grammar school uh, part would be a, a more suitable to that. Area you're talking about back when that was the elementary school. Mm -hmm. went to, great. Um, they used to have a hockey rink right there. Yeah, used to it's perfect. Well, it's it's perfect. Yeah. And I, I appreciate how flat it has to be in order for We had some nozzle figures with our. Yeah. I, I like your idea of the circle though, because I think that it's kind of the line drawing people in and that sort of central mm -hmm. high focus and movement. Yeah. Just going back though to the seating. Um, that you mentioned that we were talking about on, the, on Route 30. I like the idea, I hadn't thought about driving in and seeing that kind of light. But just as a reminder, most people, unless they bring their lunches, are gonna get their lunches across the street at Sama's and the bakery in town. So I think it's really important so that space doesn't get lost, that there's a visual, people can see that space visually. If it's down low behind a wall, I think it's gonna end up being kind of a 
a zone that gets hidden and underutilized, if that makes sense. Uh, and you're talking um, about this, this yes. section? Yeah. Like if people go, because there's not a lot of seating where it's not across yeah. from Sama, but if they go and they're looking for seating and they can't see that as an option, then they're not going to yeah. carry their lunches over yeah. there. I, the yeah. concern, you know, th this is elevated. I don't know. If, I I don't know if it would be elevated enough to address your point. So I think it's a good but thing for us to keep in mind. The hedge, right there. The hedge, exactly. Yeah. The, he yeah. the hedge, I think, is my maybe. I like hedges, but a concern. I'm just. I, we don't want sections of the park to end up being, you know, either not utilized or utilized for things that we don't feel good about. And I just feel like that can be a nook where there's just not a lot of people walking by necessarily, or a lot of, you know, the kind of life that we want there. Um, one of the points made at, uh, uh, at one of our previous meetings was about all the great spaces on campus and all the open space and why would a student ever come here, which I thought was a really important point. And in the open meeting we had on campus, what we heard from students is that, uh, yeah, there's lots of places to go, but there, there's not good seating anywhere. <laughs> you know, that, that there aren't a lot of places on campus that actually lend it themselves to plopping down with a laptop and, and writing a paper. And uh, that we should, you know, that, that would be an attraction and a, a pull for students to want to come to this space. Well, so the I was, then, thinking, after you. I was thinking about that too. So what would happen if you softened these corners, put a semicircular seating in here for people, and also one up here with it's flat before it drops off, but where people could sit and observe the park but they're not congregating in the middle, but it's quiet. They can contemplate, they can yeah. do whatever they want it. That's a thought. And you might even be able to work something into the point, similar, have a couple of circulars to kind of take that sharpness out of it and let it more spread for people. Maybe a couple of semi-circle benches. Yeah. Or maybe or something. There's also some stuff you can do with seating that's, that's really playful. Yeah. That actually, uh, and colorful, that I think could be could be really different too. And, and there are some natural seating elements that actually I think keep put on the lawn right. that are, are movable. So you, you might, you know, if you were gonna have a frisbee toss or something, you might pull the seating to one side. Um, also just, I wanted to, to mention that the slope of this might lend itself to, to the outdoor movie concept. Mm -hmm. We're sitting on a flat lawn, but I'll leave the screen. So this is how Right, yeah. Eric, you know, where's the mirrors coming? Uh, bathroom facility. Mm -hmm. I think it's right next to This this is a public rest. The lobby here is open, and, and you know Kathleen can say more. This was conceived with the idea that there would be a public restroom here. Um, that is like an eight to five, and sometimes in the evenings with select board meetings and other things, it's open. And we're thinking with special events that we might have it open. The other, you know, not a public restroom. I'm sure Salman doesn't think of it as a public restroom, but you know Salman's is right across the way. Um, we have had a suggestion to, to put restrooms in here, and um, you know it's it's in the mix, and we'll talk about it, and we'll probably even do a back of the napkin pricing, but it would it can't be a built structure, so the option is to do subterranean bathrooms, and you know I think the kinds of issues <coughs> that could come up with a 24-hour public restroom, and it's complicated, so so it's not. Dismissed out of turn, but it's complicated. So I, I think it's it's going to prove challenging to, to to build that in here. But we'll see. When uh, I grew up, there used to be a French fry stand that we all went to right across the street from there. Why could you put the restrooms right on that other side? It kind of drops off. It's not good for much, but be big enough probably to put in restrooms. Where are you going? <coughs> right here. There's the Sambas, there's the building yeah, yeah. here, and then there's the spot where he used to park his yeah. um, bus and everything. Yeah. Um, but I love that French ride right there, too. Yeah, well, it was great. Mm -hmm. we all were. Yeah, did you have a... <laughs> yeah, I, I am I'm a pedestrian in that area on the um, east side of Main Street. And it's going to be very attractive to want to cross over. Not that it wasn't attractive to go see Kathleen and her old office, but um, it's frustrating for me because I have to go left on South Main and then cross the crossover and then cross back across the access and then cross the parking lot to get to that very attractive uh, wooded area. So I see the other ways to go, you know, 
across to um, you know, the big old brick house and across into the former old front door of the municipal building. But that wonderfully attractive corner is inaccessible to a pedestrian. Yes. And that has always been tricky for yeah. me. Um, so I'm just pointing out if that's getting any reconsideration. I, you know, I know it's getting the traffic light moved or the, or the pedestrian thing, or the built-in walk, don't walk thing is, is probably an expense. But I'm just saying it, it doesn't lend itself to somebody accessing the park from the east side. And there's no it's side here, walk yeah, on the west here, side yeah. itself. From here to yeah. here. Yeah. Right. No. Just one. Yeah, duly noted. Yeah. Okay. Good point. Or the east side of Cold Street. Right. <laughs> Not all the way, but we've talked about that. Well, I have one other, one other idea. Um, when I went to college, when I went to college, which was a very long time ago, there were sidewalks and you were supposed to stay on them. And then things started to lighten up in the next decade and so on. And finally, the college got really smart. They just pay for the students' walk. So I just throw that out there. You might want to see what people want. <laughs> so I actually made that very point for your ride. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, no, no, I don't probably get it. So I, I'm with you. I get it. I think we're going to have to launch the park with some pathways and, yeah. and probably learn as we do on campus. Yeah. And I should mention that you know one of the reasons why these are long curving is because of the slope. Yeah, yeah. Trying to deal with the, the, the grade change mm -hmm. and to um, achieve the uh, accessibility, the level of accessibility that we want. Um, otherwise, I think, you know, to the point that was made earlier, we've got lots of triangles created by some of the stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm confident this, I, I, I'm 100% sure this will not be the final design. <laughs> it looks very nice. You know, some, some variation, and, and I think we can probably pull a few of these elements in. One of the other um, suggestions that we heard at a, a previous meeting was uh, a sort of large placard stand that, that like, has community events on it. I think there might be one yeah. by the bank. Yeah. Right? So so a place where you would go to kind of see information about. I mean, if you look at the, the wall outside Samus, there's that, that board where people put up the for sale items and uh, yard sales and whatever else, right? So I think we could probably incorporate that somewhere as well and it would probably be beneficial. Do you have a question? Anyone? The only thing I was going to say too is if you did a circular, center circular, you could probably run a set of steps down that grade to get to that one level. That might work. I totally agree. It's kind of like the, what's on the back side of the gym that. now, but make them really into the slope. And that may, and we may, we may end up there. I will say that out of the gates, we've tried to avoid all steps. We just said we're going to make this wheelchair accessible for everyone. We're not. We had a previous design that, that actually did, didn't have a circle, which I, I really liked that idea. It had steps, though. But it had steps, and we said, you know, we're just not going to do that. But you could um, have steps initially. that also have, you know, again, a circle, and then also something that went around. I mean, that just is so beautiful. And then you get to landscape we're it. Here. You and I completely agree on that. No. That's a different conversation on campus, right? right. It's, it's sort of. So I, I think we will yeah. we will revisit that conversation. I'm sure as a committee, uh, and I I, you know, I'm, I agree with you, but I, I, we're going to have to talk through that. Yeah. And I know you mentioned uh, doing tears or avoiding tears, and I can't remember exactly what was said, but there is a, a project currently dealing with the fairly steep slope going toward the pedestrian bridge, and it also sort of mirrors what was done in the Marble Works Park. With, I mean, you call them tears, but they're awesome sitting. Right. I'm sure you the, the slope down, yeah, yeah, on the marble work side. Slope and there's yeah. a big stone that is its wall or it's sitting. I love, I love whatever. what they did. I like yeah, the historical yeah. markers too, and I think yeah. we, we, we have with elevation. Yeah. And really? Nancy, as you know, Nancy was pretty involved with that. She's on our committee as well, so oh, she was, she's not going. She won't let us forget. Yeah, no. yeah. Is there a middle break college sign anywhere on this so when people from out of state come, you know, I don't envision this is the grand entrance to view the college, but where is that going to be? Okay. So, so there's no middle break college sign. Uh, on the park. That was the point. I know, I know. We, we, this, this is, it's come up every week so far. Um, no, you know, our, our commitment is that this, you know, 
it, it's an entry point to, to the college, and from the college, it's an entry point to the town, and there's no plan to put up a big, no. uh, no right college sign. I will say, I think one thing, when you get, if you get to, when you get to Twilight Hall, right now all we have is a small building sign yes. that indicates, that, that really doesn't say this is over college, you kind of have to square. And, and that might be the location where we do something to um, signal that you're, you're getting close to the college. Because there are people who do get to uh, that area and they, they still don't know, they're still asking where's the college. Yeah. So that's, that's a possibility, but they try to not do it. Yeah, it improved signage on, on the other side of Cabin Street. Right. I think it probably makes sense. I think we also might alter the, the paths, the landscaping on that side, yeah. to uh, better respond to uh, the park and what's happening on the other side of Cabin Street. The other thing you could do is, um, I don't know how you, what your thoughts are on Gamaliel Painter's honorary, if you know with that. But he was the one that created the town of Newbury and all the major pieces, and also he was responsible for the college. You could incorporate that maybe with that particular piece of the park, just some of those accomplishments, and yeah. it could lead you to the park. I, 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 yeah, I, I, I like, like that idea. You're looking at it, and you could say, "Here's the guy that created the town and the college." Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I think he he is that perfect. That's from right. All I know, he is that perfect right. uh, town gown transitional person who who um, you know revered both and, and did a lot to make both what they are. Yeah. So I, I'm gonna hang around, and, and if people want to come up uh, and ask questions, they're pretty informal, so hopefully you've talked about it already. But uh, I'll stick around for at least another 15 minutes, three till seven, and uh, we'll call it quits on sort of formal. But if you want to hang out and you have questions, I should also mention that Irene Barna, who uh, is uh, a uh, local historian among other things, uh, brought some really cool pictures of the old high school uh, in, in a couple of different stages. So if you're curious, um, those pictures are really cool. Will there be another meeting, do you think, with, with further designs? I, that's not the plan. I, I think the plan for now is to, to take all the feedback that we've had and collected from the three meetings that we've had, get together with the landscape architect and the advisory group, and, and really um, hash it out. Like, what are the things we, we feel offer the most value and make the most sense, given some of the challenges of the, of the, of the space? And uh, Come, come, you know, whittle it down to a couple of designs that I think will be different from those, but probably variations that, you know, you'll look at them and they'll say, oh yeah, that's in the same family. And so we'll iterate on those, I think, probably through a couple of rounds. And then I, the thinking is that we'll put that design out in a, in a, at the end of the article so that people see where we come out. Uh, there's also a process on the college side of things where, uh, you know, we have a, a Responsible and obligation to the board of trustees to, to make sure that they're on board with the design, and, and there's you know there's a process on on the other side of, of this as well. So you know that's happening in parallel with this. Um, so that's that's the thinking. Irene, the trees. Uh, I'm sure as a, as, a, as a landscape architect, she's thought about this, but. In the 40 years that I have lived in Middlebury, it's amazing how fast trees grow. And you can notice a property that you can say, okay, they planted those trees 25 years ago for a screen, but now all they have are the trunks because the trees are up there. Mm -hmm. So I assume he's keeping that in mind to what kind of trees mm -hmm. are planted. I actually, I think Keith is, I that's think a Keith is really tuned in on that. Yeah. I mean, his, Yes, he's a landscape architect, but his horticultural experience is really cool. <laughs> and that's, if I can, just a personal thing. That's what I'm really looking forward to here in the park, because that's sort of my background. And when I think about, you know, not just the variation in the trees, but the grasses and the species and the lawns and the ground covers and the seasonal appeal of that landscape could be so much nicer than what we see even on campus, there are certain areas where, even on campus where we've said, hey, let's make this more of a seasonal landscape where it isn't just sugar maples for full color and some shade trees, and it really makes a difference. So that's, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing that, mm -hmm. you know? 
and if I can make just one more comment, you know, it won't be everything when it's completed, you know. <laughs> Things like sculpture <coughs> and signage and variations in seating and historical markers and they can come as time goes on, you know, and it's our intention to do it, all of those, I think, but it doesn't have to all be done at once and it won't be all perfect when we're finished. It won't be. It won't satisfy everyone. But I think in time it will. That's the hope. Tom, Tom is a good check for my uh, unbridled enthusiasm. <laughs> yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, so anyway, I want to thank everyone for coming out and Thanks. for your interest in the project and I invite you to hang out if you want to hang out and check out these pictures and stay tuned for more information uh, in the coming weeks and months. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.